there are three relationships we'll be in until the day we die. There's our relationship with other people, our relationship with ourselves, and our relationship with life itself. And those are kind of three marriages of their own. And the quality of those relationships will determine the quality of your life. But they'll also determine the quality of the other two relationships, right? So if you have a poor relationship with life and you're dissatisfied with life and you, you're, you know, you're angry at life for the hand you've been dealt and for where you are in your life, then it, it becomes harder in, in your relationship with other people because you can end up being a very draining presence and a very negative presence for other people. People tend to be on, want to be around people who carry the energy that they would like to have uh, and that lifts them up, you know, unless they're in a really difficult place themselves and they want to surround themselves with other people who are in that state. But, you know, it's very attractive when we ourselves are a life lover who gets excited about life, gets excited about the little things. You, you know this when you go traveling with someone and they're the kind of person that just gets excited with everything the moment they get off the plane. Like, look at this. Oh my God, I'm so excited to be here. This is so much fun. I can't believe we're here. It's much more fun than someone who is complaining or frankly, someone who's like, yeah, I've been here like five times. You know, it's, I, I, I was excited five times ago. I don't care anymore. Like that's not exciting either. That's not fun either. So being around people who have a great relationship with life is very, very, very attractive if you take the relationship with ourselves, if that's not in a good place, if we're in a place of self-contempt or self-loathing, that will absolutely affect our ability to find our person because people take their cues from us. If, if we go into a situation looking for them to tell us what's great about us, we're not really doing our job. You know, we're, we're not coming from a place of leadership. It's, it's saying I've, I've, I've been around this, you know, this human all my life and I, I don't like them, but I hope you do. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's a hard sell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if you, if you come to the table as someone who has accepted yourself and, and there's a different level of peace that you carry within your relationship with yourself, then that's that's very infectious. A, because we're not giving, importantly, we're not giving people reasons not to like us. I always, you know, when, when we're not happy with ourselves, it's like we're giving people reasons not to like us. We're, we're, it's, it's no different from going to bed with someone and you're in a, you, you think it's exciting, you think they're awesome, and you think that you, you're just happy to be there. And then Someone, as you undress a part of someone, they cover it up and they're like, oh no, I don't like that part of my, I, I, please, I don't, turn the light off. I don't like, it's like, you didn't even have a problem with that part of them, but now they've drawn all the attention in the world to the fact that they don't like it. You start wondering if you shouldn't like it either, right? So we take our cues from other people. Um, and, and, and then of course, when you've accepted yourself and you, you, that's infectious too, because there tends to be a level of peace about you that other people want for themselves. You know, if they, if they sense that there's a groundedness and a peace to you, well, the rest of us know that that's not easy to arrive at. So when you find someone who's like that, it's a very compelling thing because you, well, you kind of want a bit of what they have. You want to be close to that. You, wanna, you want some of it to rub off on you because, you know, maybe in your own life you've struggled to find that. And, and so it's... It's, again, it's very attractive. So these these relationships feed into each other. Of course, again, the the more you have a great relationship with yourself and with life, you're the more you're also coming from a place of mm, not having to not coming to your love life as a kind of person in need of a lifeline. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you you. I don't, I'm not a big believer in the kind of like, you have to come to a relationship fully healed and you have to come happy and whatever. I, you have to, the truth is you have to, I write about this in the last chapter of the book. You have to arrive to someone happy enough. <laughs> you don't have to be blissfully happy or have figured everything out. I don't think anyone does. I just think you have to come happy enough. And happy enough means 
you're happy enough that if you meet someone amazing, you don't think that this person is now going to, you know, if you lose them, they're going to take your happiness with you because you have enough of it on your own that it's okay. You want this person, you're excited, but it's also not life and death. Happy enough also means that you can meet someone who's not great for you, who treats you poorly, and you're happy enough to say no thank you, um, which is happy. No is only something you can say when you're happy enough. If you're not happy and you're like, I just need, I need something to help me. I need something to save me from this, this dark place that I'm in on my own. Then, then you'll take whatever you're given. And that's a very, very dangerous place to come from. 